if you observe the universe carefully, every element in the universe is constantly serving. Every day I'm trying to plant seeds of gratitude and I recommend doing it the first thing you do in the morning, but even more importantly, the last thing you do before you go to bed. Marcus Aurelius once said, it's not death that we should fear, we should fear never beginning to live. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like na 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 na. For my top 10, top 10, top 10. This one's for my top 10. He's Jay Shetty, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume 6. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Tap into the way of the universe. I was looking at life and going, what do I want my life to be about? And I saw successful people who are depressed. I saw rich people who are sad. And I saw famous people who in the end had to find a new way of getting happy. And just this week as we're talking, we saw what happened to Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, Bourdain and rest in peace to both of them and, you know, blessings and, and our best wishes and prayers for both of them. Yeah, and the, and and, the millions, and of, the millions other of other people in the world that yeah. we don't know about, yeah. like in the people that we don't talk about and we yeah. don't see because they're yeah. not famous and well known. At 18, I was awakened to the belief and understanding that if I did not focus on my consciousness, there was no such thing as happiness and meaning. If I didn't go inward, there was no chance of longevity in any form right. because I saw all of this around me. Right. So what I saw in the monks that was different is that they almost had tapped in to the way of the universe. And I'll explain what I mean by that. What I mean is that if you observe the universe carefully, every element in the universe is constantly serving, constantly. The water provides us with energy the trees provide us with nutrition. The oxygen is just fueling our bodies. Yeah. And it's taking nothing from us. Yeah. You look at the tree, when you take shade of a tree, the tree doesn't say that will be $2. Yeah. Right? The tree uh, the I tree, think about this all the time with right? air. I really yeah, do. Yeah, but yeah it's, yeah, it's it's so many things. And now we're bottling up air and selling it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> There's yeah. oxygen bars. <laughs> but, but the point being that there is every element, the sun is giving light. Yeah. And is growing our plants and vegetables. The rain is growing our plants and vegetables. Every element in the universe is serving. And what I learned as a monk, and you speak about this, and we just experienced it so deeply when we were there, is that the only way to be aligned with the universe is to serve. Because then you're acting in alignment. Because the universe is serving. So when you're serving, you are now in the universe. You're now mm -hmm. with the universe. The universe is your ally. Whereas as long as you're trying to serve yourself and be greedy, you're now working against the universe. So when people talk about like the universe has your back or you should work with the universe or be aligned with the universe, that's what it means. Universe isn't about, oh universe, I want a big car, like give it to me. That's yeah. not being aligned with the universe. Right. Being aligned with the universe is choosing service right. as your focus. Rule number two, grow from rejection. We should actually be extremely grateful that some things don't work out the way we once wanted them to. When we get rejected or we fail or things don't go our way, we feel we're further away from our goal. But sometimes it's in those moments that we have the greatest opportunity to reflect, refuel and refocus. It's in those moments that feel like the death of our dreams that our truest potential is actually taking birth. If a door doesn't open, it's not your door. Often we're trying to climb ladders that are not ours to climb. Is your dream really your dream? Are you chasing what you truly want? I remember one of my mentors telling me that in our pain, we find our greatest power. Success is not built on success. It's built on failure. It's built on frustration. It's built on fears that you have to overcome. Sometimes it takes a good fall to really know where you stand. Every time we think we're being rejected from something good, remember, we're just being redirected to something better. Rule number three, plant seeds of gratitude. 
Let's speak about gratitude for a minute. Absolutely. So one of the things about gratitude is that studies show that when you're in gratitude, when you're feeling gratitude, you can't be in another state. So you can't be angry or sad or disappointed when you're being grateful. So grateful for me is like a seed. And when you're grateful, you plant this seed in your life, which is going to grow a beautiful tree and shade and fruits. And it helps you avoid what I call weeds in our life. So when we're planting sadness or disappointment or anger, these are like weeds in our life. So every day I'm trying to plant seeds of gratitude and I recommend doing it the first thing you do in the morning, but even more importantly, the last thing you do before you go to bed. Because when you do it before you go to bed, you wake up with gratitude in the morning. So it programs your mind to be grateful the next day. Rule number four, change your perspective. Marcus Aurelius once said, it's not death that we should fear. We should fear never beginning to live. When we die, our lifeline does this. When we're alive, our lifeline does this. Notice how that connects with our real experience of life. Life is full of ups and downs. It means you're alive. Twists and turns. Love and loss. Happiness and sadness. Success and failure. We experience extreme highs, peaks and summits and at the same time experience the troughs, the lows and submit. Life is kind of like one big crazy roller coaster. It starts slowly, fills you with anticipation and curiosity, takes you up and then sends you flying down only to rise up quickly again. We laugh until it hurts. We cry inside a little. Experience a few moments where we wanted to stop and hope it's all over, but it just keeps going. We somehow think that success is linear, an upward line. There is literally no case study for that. Everyone we admire has ups and downs. Your body mostly replaces itself every seven to 15 years. The organs that work the hardest have the fastest changeover. You get a whole new skin every two to four weeks. Your red blood cells last less than half a year and your liver renews itself at least once every couple of years. The universe is always changing. We are always changing, but we want to remain the same. We settle for security, not recognizing that a flat lifeline means we're dead. Real life is ups and downs. Death looks like this. We cannot avoid the ups and downs but we can change the way we see them. Because as Wayne Dyer said, when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Also, if you wanna learn how to have more confidence, check out my 254 Confidence series. It's free. The link to join is in the description below. Get that goal, get that dream, and I've just been telling you, drive it and drive it and drive it and drive it. What I've been talking about is consistency. If you're gonna speak effectively, you have to know way more than you're talking about. And so to become fearless, why not find some time every day to practice becoming fearless? Rule number five, wake up. Awakening signifies that we're asleep. When you say we have to become woke or awaken or any of these words that we're using now, ri rising above, it all means that we're asleep. So even though we think we're awake, we're saying we're consciously asleep. Yeah. And therefore the earth, people around us, conscious creators, everyone you've mentioned, are simply all trying to wake each other up. And we all know that when you don't wake up in the morning, the alarm just has to get louder and louder and louder. And if the alarm doesn't get louder and louder and louder and louder, we don't wake up. And so if you see the earth in a state of emergency, if you see the environment in a state of emergency, if you're looking at the world in a state of emergency, it's because the alarm is just getting louder and louder and louder and trying to say, wake up, like, like wake up, you know? And so for me, that's the process that we all need to go through. Just as it's tough to wake up in the morning after you've been out to a party, you've had too much to drink, you've done something that you weren't proud of or you've wasted your time, just as it's hard to wake up every morning when you've done that the night before, it's hard to wake up consciously 
when that's all you've done for lifetimes, like when that's all you've done for your whole life. Yeah. That's how hard it is. And I think that's why we struggle because we all know how hard it is to just wake up the next morning when you've had a late night. Yeah. Imagine you've been having late nights in your consciousness for a long period of time. Rule number six, be patient. The biggest pressure I think we feel is we're rushed by other people's timelines. We're rushed by the success and achievement of people around us, or we're rushed by the supposed success and achievements of others we see on social media. And the biggest thing I'd say is, give yourself permission to take time. Give yourself permission to recognize that living your passion and creating a purpose takes time. For some people, they've waited till 30 or 40 or 50 or 60. We want it to happen in our 20s, but your best years are yet to come. Rule number seven, fill your cup with positives. A businessman was rushing down the street because he was late for a meeting. It was a really important one and he wanted to make it there on time. It was at that moment that this other man bumped into him and made him spill all of his coffee all over his brand new suit. Now, not only was he late for this important meeting, but he was also covered in coffee. He was totally furious, frustrated and angry, but what could he do? Now, if we ask this simple question, why did he spill the coffee? The obvious answer is, because someone walked into him, someone who wasn't paying attention bumped into him. And that's the wrong answer. The real answer is he spilled coffee because that's what was in his cup. If he had tea in his cup, he would have spilled tea. If he had orange juice in his cup, he would have spilled orange juice. If he had water in his cup, he would have spilled water. Whatever is inside our cup is what will spill out when life will come and shake us, or rattle us, or push us, which is inevitable, it's what we're holding onto, or what's inside of us, that spills over. And when that happens, what comes out could be anger, frustration, pressure, or stress. Or it could be forgiveness, joy, and empathy. So we have to ask ourselves, what's in our cups? When life gets tough, what spills over? Is it gratitude, healing, kindness, and compassion? Or is it negativity, toxic feelings and beliefs, and pain? When things are going smoothly, we're not even aware of what we're holding on to or what's inside of us. Sometimes we don't even recognize and identify something until we're shaken, until something negative happens. Today, let's be proactive. Let's start by filling our cups with forgiveness, kindness, and empathy. So that when we're shaken, that's what will come out. Rule number eight, find your real self. We're so lost in these false identities. Right. In the same way as the body's one identity, like, and then the second identity is, oh, well, I'm from the US, you're from the UK. I'm from India, you're from Africa. That's one other identity. It's another layer we've added to ourselves. Then another one is, I'm from this city like rep my city, right? Like I'm representing yeah. my city. I'm New York versus Chicago versus London versus whatever. And then beyond that, it's like my sports team. Right, I was And then beyond that. that, it's like my family. Now it's, it's, now it's uh, social media. Yes, now it's social media. It's my following, my right. this. And it's like we're constantly ruining our own understanding of our own real identity being, by putting on fake costumes. Yeah. And it's like becoming a method actor. Right. Like we're all method actors where we're lost in the identities we've created for ourselves. Yeah. So I, I often like to think of it like Inception. Yeah. Like we have lost ourselves in an identity, in an identity, in an identity. Right. Like that, which you, I think you have talked about this before, that perception of Correct. a perception. Correct. Yeah, one of my favorite quotes from Cooley right. is, I'm not what I think I am, I'm not what you think I am, I am what I think you think I am. And, and we, we lose ourselves in that. Yeah. But I, wanna, I want us to almost like be pulled back. It's like falling down a well yeah. and like being so deep or falling into the ocean and being so lost deep and you need someone to come and pull you out. Yeah. And it's almost like that's what we all need to do with ourselves. Rule number nine, make an impact. There are three things that control our lives. Time, wealth, and health. When we're young, we have time. Time to play, time to explore, time to waste, time to be curious. When we're young, we generally have health. We have energy, we have strength. But most of us don't 
have wealth. We don't have all the money in the world. We can't buy everything we want. We don't get everything we want. As we get older, we still have our health. It may not be the same, but it's still there. But we now have more wealth. We have more money. We have a home. We have devices and possessions. We have a car. We have access to things. But we don't always have time. Money can buy a house, but not a home. It can buy a bed, but not sleep. It can buy a book, but not knowledge. Money can earn a title, but not respect. It can buy a clock, but not time. Those of us who think we have no time for our health will sooner or later have to find time for our illness. When we're young, we had time and health, but no money. When we're older, we have money and health, but no time. And finally, in old age, we have money and time, but no health to use that wealth. So what do we do? We can have it all, just not all at the same time. We place so much pressure on ourselves, trying to get everything to be perfect, trying to get everything to balance, trying to get everything to work together, not recognizing that it's none of those things that actually create happiness or fulfillment in life. As we get older, time, health, and wealth will all be taken away from us. But the one thing that can never be taken away from us is the impact we have on others because it lives on through them. And rule number 10, the last one for a very special bonus clip is know your biology. What time do you usually go to sleep? This is not the time you went to sleep last night. It's not the time you want to sleep tonight. This is the time you go to sleep on average. Wait a minute, uh, let me write this down. Now I want you to write down what time do you usually wake up? When is it? Not just when you're forced to go to work, but what is your natural body rhythm? What is the natural time that you tend to wake up? Write that down now. Now tell me, using those two numbers, what is the midpoint of your sleep? For example, if you usually go to sleep at 10 and you wake up at six, the midpoint would be two. So figure that out right now by looking at those two, what is the midpoint of your sleep? So as you can see from this diagram, if your midpoint is between 12 a.m. to 3 a.m., you're known as a lark and you're 14% of the population. If you wake up from between 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., then you're what's known as a third bird. These people are 65% of the population. And finally, if your midpoint is 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., then you're known as an owl. You make up 21% of the population. So depending on your midpoint and your categorization, you will make decisions at better times. You will make better first impressions at different times. So if you're a lark, remember that was if your midpoint is 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. Your analytical tasks should be done early morning. Your insight tasks should be late afternoon or early evening. Making an impression, the morning is your best friend. And making a decision, again, it's the early morning. Now, if you're a third bird, which means your midpoint is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., then you'll do the analytical tasks best in the early to mid morning. You'll do your insight tasks best late afternoon and early evening. You'll make an impression in the morning and you'll make your best decisions early to mid morning. Now finally, if you're an owl and your midpoint is 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., your analytical tasks are actually better late afternoon and evening. Your insight tasks are best in the morning. You make an impression best, sorry, in the morning, and you make your best decisions in the late afternoon and evening. This very simple framework is either going to give you assurance that you're making your right decisions and your impressions at the right time of the day, or hopefully it's giving you awareness so that you can start shifting your thought patterns and start not worrying about making tough decisions at night. See, now if you know that you make your best decisions in the early morning, or you make your best impressions in the morning to mid-morning, then you'll know to reserve those important meetings, those important conversations till then. You won't now sit up all night forcing yourself to try and come to a conclusion because you know that your biology, your makeup, the sleep that you're getting is dictated 
meeting when you're best at making a decision. Try it out for the rest of the week and let me know what you find. Now I've got a special bonus clip from Jay on how to find your path that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching the video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, how can you fill your cup with positives? Number two, what rejection do you need to grow from? And number three, what's the impact that you wanna make? When I was 22, I decided to turn down my corporate job offers and go and live as a monk in India for three years. And half our days was silence and half of it was service. So we meditated for half the day and the other half we were trying to serve humanity and make a difference in the world. Wow, so that is why you decided to not just be in India and be a monk, you decided it's better to be able to share this knowledge. Yeah, well when I left and came back, I was in debt. I moved in with my parents, age 26, mm -hmm. and I was trying to figure things out. But a lot of my friends now worked at large organizations and they were going through stress and burnout and pressure. And so they started to invite me to speak at their companies about everything I'd learned as a monk. And I started to do that, and I started to see impact inside these organizations, but I really felt, I was like, this knowledge and wisdom needs to reach everyone in the world. It needs to reach further than just corporate boardrooms. So in 2016, only three years ago, I started making these videos, which were these wisdom bites, and thankfully to all of you and many others who've watched them, they started to spread. And Ariana Huffington was someone who really supported them and gave me an early tipping point too. If you want more Jay, check out the top 50 rules video I made on him. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Thank you so much for featuring my ideas and my thoughts. I've been following you for a long, long time. So I'm really excited to see this come together.